the headline. All right, here it is. This is the headline here. Britain wooing Muslim investment. All right, Britain wooing Muslim investment. And there is a sort of a conference of the World, Is the World Islamic Economic Forum is meeting currently in Britain. First time this forum is, is being held outside of a Muslim country. And what's, what's interesting is that Britain is now going to issue Islamic bonds, as, uh, or as they call it in Arabic, sukuk, Islamic bonds, that is not based on interest, on riba. And what's amazing here is the recognition from the world, and in particular Britain here, of the need to cater. I mean, their perspective might be a little bit different, but uh, 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 they're catering to the needs of Muslims. I mean, their perspective is they want to make money. So if in making money, we have to issue Sharia compliant things, then they'll do that. Not necessarily because they love the Muslims or whatever, but because they're looking to make money. But in spite of that, or despite that, at the very least, they have come to recognize and realize the, the value that the Muslims have, albeit financially here, uh, in the world today. So they're willing now, you know, usually Sharia or anything Islamic, they don't like to deal with these things. In fact, they like to paint them on a very negative brush. But now they're willing, they're going to issue, Britain is going to issue 200 million pounds of Islamic bonds. So as a Muslim person, if you want to invest now and you're worried about interest and, and interest-based dealings, you don't have to. Uh, in his speech, the Prime Minister of Britain also mentioned that Islamic financing or finances is growing at a 50% rate faster than normal banking. And, and the article mentioned that by next year, 2014, Islamic investments around the world will equal 1.3 trillion pounds. So it's a lot of money. But at least there is that willingness to, to, to deal with the, uh, the Islamic finances at least uh, on an equal level. That this is something that that, that is positive for the world and they'd like to, of course, get a share of it. But for me also, what I see in this is another side of the, or, uh, of another side of the same story. And that is, as Muslims, initially when we encounter a situation, we may have no choice but to sort of put up with it, try to manage it for a while. But ultimately, brothers and sisters, our goal as Muslims should be to transform, to move it along. Not just to be satisfied with the situation as we find it, and we try to fit in somehow. As I said, that may be necessary initially. But Islam came to transform the lives of people, to improve it for them. By change, I don't mean we want to take over for the sake of taking over. By change, what I mean is, is to improve the lives of people. That's why Islam came. And that's what it did in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, in improving the lives of people, changes have to be made. So it may seem, from one perspective, that Islam took over, so to speak. But it did not take over to enslave people, or to control them, or to take advantage of them. It took over in order to enhance their lives. And so what happened in the time of the Prophet and after he passed away and for many generations after that, Islam transformed societies and transformed people. So as Muslims, we should not simply, especially when we interact or we deal with, with the Western world, 
For us, on a practical level, we live here. We have families here. Our children are born and raised here. And they're going to have their own, children, their own families born and raised here as well. So for all intents and purposes, this is home now. This is where we live and where we belong. So we should not be simply satisfied with the situation as it is, with the status quo. But we should try to change this, to, to bring about changes that will improve the lives of people. And that is, I believe, the important lesson in this article, among other things that we can learn, but I believe this is an important one that we need to learn, that we should strive to change, not necessarily overnight, that's the other thing. All right, changes don't have to happen overnight. Allah the Exalted did not overnight transform society. He did not prohibit X, Y, Z and, and order X, Y, Z or A, B, C overnight. SubhanAllah, Allah the Exalted, the wise, He revealed the Quran over a period of 23 years. 23 years. And it was over this period that slowly the concepts and the values and the principles of Islam were being established a little bit at a time in the lives of people so that the change that overcame them, it did so slowly. So we don't need to rush into making changes. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't start working towards the change even if it comes out there slowly. So we should not be satisfied with what we find. Initially, we, we, we try to, to do the best we can with what we find. But then we should start planning so that we, we can move this forward, inshallah. Many of you might have been in this uh, country or this city for the last 30 or 40 years. And you know, I don't know this, but I've heard from brothers who have lived here uh, uh, for a long period of time since the 60s and 70s and so on, that there was a time when it was very difficult to find halal meat stores, for example. I heard from brothers up in Niagara Falls who used to travel to Toronto to buy their halal meat. Brothers used to drive from St. Catherine to bring their kids to, to, to Islamic classes on the weekends at Jami Mosque, because that was the only masjid at one time. But the Muslims weren't satisfied with that situation. We had to do the best we can initially. But eventually what happened, MashaAllah, there are now masjids all over the place. So our brothers down in St. Catherine don't have to come out here on the weekends, uh, especially in the winter time, just to bring their kids to Islamic classes. They are now able to have their own Islamic classes close to where they live. And this is testament to this, this transformation, the, the nature of the transformation uh, of, the, of the message of Islam. That we should not be satisfied with the way things are. Unless, of course, they're perfect. But if they're not, then we should try, strive to positively contribute towards changing it for the better. Even if it takes time. Even if it takes a long time. But inshallah, we'll get there. And that is what is important. Not to change overnight, but to have the plan and the intention to change and to start that process even if it's a slow one. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, even while encouraging change for what is better, he, he exhorted the Muslims not to take on too much. Not to take on too much. Because taking on a lot will only overburden you, will overpower you, will burn you out. So he said, alayhi salatu wassalam, alaykum min al-a'mali ma tufiqoon. You should take on actions and deeds, things that you have the capacity to do. You take too much, you don't have the capacity. Eventually, you won't be able to do it, you will have to give up some of it. So we take what we can do and we work with that and inshallah slowly changes will come. So it's amazing that a British government is now willing to issue Islamic bonds, mind you. Uh, you know, a few years ago this idea might have seemed impossible. Can't happen, won't happen. 
But now it is happening. It is happening. And so, subhanAllah, we can learn from this that we need to change the situations that we find and improve them, but do so in a slow way. And so, even at work, brothers and sisters, initially you might go there when there is no place to pray, for example. That's okay. You do the best you can initially, but as a Muslim, you have to try to improve the situation. And so the Muslim person or the Muslim people at the same workplace need to get together and brainstorm, well, what can we do in terms of improving the situation? And slowly, that's how things will change and improve. What this ultimately will mean also, brothers and sisters, is that certain changes cannot happen unless we become involved in the political process. I know every time elections come around, whether it is at the city level or the province level or the federal level, the national level, yeah. there was always the conversations about whether it's uh, permissible to vote or it's haram to vote and, and things like that. And you know what? These discussions are, mashallah, important. <coughs> I am glad that we are talking instead of actually, you know, fighting. But what we need to realize is that we need to make changes. And Allah has asked us to invite to His way, to do da'wah with what? Bil hikmah. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah. Invite to the way of your Lord. Invite to Islam. Invite to the good that Islam has to offer to the world, but with wisdom. With wisdom. And so we need to use this wisdom. Be smart in, in, uh, in showing others the message of Islam. So we need to engage even at that level if we really want to bring about and enact changes that will be not only for the betterment of the Muslims, but mashallah for all of society. There is nothing in Islam that is only good for Muslims and not good for the non-Muslims. Absolutely not. Whatever is good for the Muslims is also good for those who are not Muslim. Despite the fact that they may not believe or accept or, or subscribe to the aqidah of the Muslims. Despite that. And that's why when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, not all the people of Medina were Muslims. There were some, albeit sort of the minority, who were not Muslims. But they were quite happy. They were quite happy with the way that, uh, 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 with the change that Islam brought about in, the, in life in Medina. And they were happy to, to be citizens of Medina and to have the messenger of Allah, although they did not believe in him, as the leader, per se, or the ruler. Because that's what Allah wants for people. He wants the best in life. And he has given us this legislation to allow us to achieve that best in life. And so, not only for the Muslims, but for the whole community and society as well, and so we need to, as Muslims, recognize this. That we don't have to submit to the situation as it is. Initially, we might have to. But we should start thinking about how best we can bring about positive changes to the situations we face in our societies. That's what Islam is all about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed for mankind. And may he inspire us all to live by this message. May he keep us from the straight path. And may he forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. And may he help us and guide us. So that we can begin to become positive contributors. Not only to the Muslim community. But to the wider community in which we live.